Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, mister. Well, you say your name out like you got nothing to hide. Well, now you're right again. Yeah. Well, I guess a man wanted to hide something. He'd be wearing a gun to help him do it. Maybe. Well, are you agreeing with me or ain't you agreeing with me? <laughs> Any way you want it, mister. Yeah, you're a big capper, but I ain't afraid of you. There's no reason you should be. You're awful big. Man be a fool to go against you without a gun, wouldn't he? But wouldn't he? Mister, have a drink. No. Here. You have this instead. I always carry an extra gun in my belt. I don't want your gun. Well, I can't fight you less than you have a gun. You're too big. We got no cause to fight, mister. Now, you take your gun back. <laughs> you're free. You're a coward. You're a sneaking coward. Don't you push it, mister. I said you're a coward. All right, fellow. You've had enough. Now, you, you keep out of this. I am wearing a gun, mister. I'll bend it across your skull in a minute. Oh. You're the marshal. Get out of here. Go on, move. Sure. Sure. Well, suppose I ought to thank you, marshal. No need. Name is Foss Capper. You know, most men around Dodge do wear guns, Capper. I've had enough of fighting, Marshal. Oh? And where was that? By the... The war. Had it from Harper's Ferry all the way to Richmond. You know, a man gets tired of killing. Yeah, I know. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? Mr. Dillon... Ben Stasel's out there in the street. So? He's about to beat up one of his riders. I suppose it has to do with his sister again, huh? Yes, it sure does. And Carrie's there, too. All right, let's go. Oh, I declare that poor Carrie. Mr. Dillon, she was trying to load their wagon all by herself. And this rider, Stansel's come along, and he was helping her when Stansel himself come up and got real sore about it. Stansel doesn't deserve a sister like Carrie. Mm. She's as nice as he is, mean and ugly. There they are. Yeah. Well, say, where's that cowboy at? He's lying on the ground behind Stancil. Well, I sure didn't hear no shooting. Back to loading that stuff, Jerry. You hear me? Yes. I hear you, Ben. 
Well, I hope you didn't kill him, Stansel. Oh. He's all right, Marshal. I only knocked him down. Well, I'll go get some water from over there. And I should have killed him. For what? Trying to help Carrie do a man's work? Carrie's my sister, Marshal. What she does ain't no business of yours. No. But you're keeping men away from her the way you do is going to lead to real trouble one of these days. My trouble, Marshal. Not if you kill somebody. You know, I guess men don't like the way you treat her. There's somebody else trying to help her. What? Now, by him. You just take it easy, Stansel. That man's not wearing a gun. Then he better go get one. What do you think you're doing, stranger? Well, that box seemed a little heavy for a lady to be lifted. Please, Ben. He meant no harm. You know this man? He told me his name. Jerry, you're turning into a regular doxy. Uh, I wouldn't talk like that, mister. You shut up. You're going to beat me like you did the other fellow? There's been enough fighting for one day. Stands all your wagons loaded. So why don't you get going? All I can say to you, mister, you better get yourself a gun. Get up on the seat, Carrie. Good day, Miss Carrie. Goodbye, Mr. Capper. Well, how did you get mixed up in this, Capper? I was curious, so I followed you out. And I seen her struggling with that box. Couldn't just stand there and watch her, could I? Uh Uh-huh. You just remember something. Someday, Stansel's gonna kill somebody over her. Well, I sure hope it won't be me. Then you know what to do, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I know what to do, Marshal. You've heard Bobby Haggard whistling it on radio and television. Right now, a country-style version. Okay, partners? Packs more pleasure. Packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. It stands to reason a cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Because it's more perfectly packed by Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. Shopping? <laughs> well, I guess a woman's always shopping, Matt. Whether she buys anything or not. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. Well, now. Hmm? What? That's Carrie Stansel. Huh? Oh. Well, sure. But isn't that Foss Capper driving her wagon? Well, where have you been the last few weeks, Matt? He drives her wagon every time she comes to town. He does? Well, Sure. He rides out, meets her part way, ties his horse behind, and they drive in together. And this has been going on for a couple of weeks or so? Oh, but at least. Uh, ben Stansel hasn't found out, I take it. <laughs> I doubt if Capper's ever showed himself anywhere near the ranch, Matt. Oh, you think he's afraid? Don't you? 
Maybe he only wants to avoid a fight. Isn't that the same thing? No, not necessarily, Kitty. Well, if he wasn't a coward, he'd be wearing a gun, wouldn't he? I don't know, Kitty. I haven't decided about Foss Caber. Look at them, Matt. They're so wrapped up in each other, they don't even see us. This is the last time it's got to be. I don't want to bring you no trouble, Carrie, but I ain't going to stop seeing you. Oh, Paul. Um, she's smarter than he is. Yeah, maybe. You know, I guess she'll never be able to get away from that brother of hers. Uh, oh, Matt, look. Yeah. There's going to be trouble, Matt. Stancil looks awful mad. Well, I don't like to interfere in family matters, but... This time, I guess I'd better. Yeah, you'd better hurry, too. Yeah, I will. How long has this been going on, Carrie? Please, Ben. Let's talk about it at home, not here. We're going to settle this here and now. You ain't going to stop it, Marshal. I just want to be sure you remember that Foss Kepper doesn't carry a gun, Stancil. Dirty coward. Of course he doesn't. A gun wouldn't solve anything, Stanton. If it'd get you killed, that'd solve things. Maybe for you, not for Carrie. I don't even want to hear you saying her name. You're going to have to hear it. Now, it's gone on long enough, Stancil, the way you treat her. What I do with Carrie ain't no business of yours. I want Carrie to marry me. Boss, you never told me that. Well, uh... I've been thinking on it, Carrie. I figured to wait, but... I guess there ain't time now for waiting. Oh, Foss. Carrie's worked hard for you, Stancil. And you never gave her a thing of her own. You kept everybody from her for fear of losing her. She ain't a woman to you, a sister. She's nothing but cheap labor. I'll kill you sure now. No, you won't, because you'd hang for it. I'll get you, Capper, one way or the other. <laughs> Carrie. Yes? You go on back to the ranch and get what things you need. I'll be waiting right here for you tomorrow noon. No, you Carrie, can't no. not stop us, Stancil. You're going to be free, Carrie. You make up your mind later about marrying. But you're going to be free. Carrie. Stancil, you shut up. And don't you lay a finger on her. Or I'll just beat you to death. Go on now, Carrie. All right, boss. Noon tomorrow, Carrie. I'll be waiting. And you mind what I said, Stancil. Don't you try to stop her. I won't try to stop her. It's you I'm going to stop. Now, you know, Marshal, I didn't mean to cause trouble when I come here. <laughs> yeah, maybe not, Cover. But you sure done it. <laughs> you listening to Gunsmoke in your favorite easy chair or out driving? Oh, there you are, in the kitchen. Say, you want to make whatever you're doing more enjoyable? Have a Chesterfield. Enjoy Chesterfield's better taste and mildness. It stands to reason a cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. 
by Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. Is it, Chester? You better get on out there quick. It's fixing to happen. Ben Stansel just rode in with two of his men. What? Has Carrie showed up yet? No, sir, she ain't. But Foss Trapper was waiting for her when their mothers come in. Yeah. I didn't think Stansel had let her go without a fight. Oh, there's going to be a fight, all right. Of some kind. Look how they're crowding him. Three of us can do it. Oh, you don't, Stansel. You keep out of this, Marshal. You don't think I'm going to stand by and watch three men work over one, do you? Wait, Marshal. Yeah, what, Kevin? Now, there ain't no other way. I'll take them on, all of them. It's got to be done. Wait a minute. Look who's coming yonder. It's Carrie. I told her to go back home. What? What in the world is the matter with her? She looks like she got drugged. You keep away from her, Captain. Shut up, Stansel. Leave him be. Carrie, what happened to you? They caught up with me. The edge of tall. Here, I'll help you down. I, I got here anyway. He couldn't stop me. Did your brother do this to you? Did he knock you around? You get back on that wagon and go home, Carrie. All right, hold it, Stansel. Let her talk. Carrie. Did he do it? Yes. You sure need convincing, I told Carrie. you to shut up, Stansel. Chester. Yeah? Would you be good enough to take Carrie over to Miss Kitty's? Because I got a little business here. Uh, be glad to. Don't you move, Stansel. You, you come on to me, Miss Carrie. All right, boys. Let's get to work. Wait just a minute, Stansel. I've changed my mind. What? I ain't going to fight you. Not now, not that way. We're going to settle this for good and all. What are you talking about? Marshal Dillon, could I ask you a favor? What, Cabot? Lend me your gun. Well. All right. All right, here it is. Thank you. Now, what's this? What are you two doing? Who ever heard of a lawman lending his gun? I think Capper's right, Stansel. This business has got to be settled for good. And he's the one to do it, not me. Okay. And you can watch him die. You ready, boys? Now, wait a minute, Stansel. You didn't say nothing about no gunfight. What difference does that make? There's something about him. I don't like the way he wears that gun. He looks kind of professional to me. He's nothing but a tin horn, and he's a coward at that. He ain't no coward. And I ain't having no part of this. Come on, Bob, let's don't be fools. Now, you're fired, both of you. Good. Stansel? Was he right, Kepper? Are you a gunman? You can find out. Easy enough. You gonna stand there and allow this, Marshal? I can't stop it now. Well, I think he is a gunman. I think he's a killer. Stansel. You're through. Get going. Marshal, your gun, I thank you. Sure. You remember I, I told you how a man gets 
tired of killing? I had a feeling it was more than the war that did it. I thought I was all through wearing a gun. That's why I asked Carrie to marry me. So? You tell her for me, Marshal. Tell her I was ready to kill her brother. I can't ask her to marry me now. A day will always come when I'll have to put on a gun again. Not against Stencil. Well, there's others. A man like me's got enemies. Why don't you tell her about it yourself, Cover? <laughs> it wouldn't be fair. I'd be influencing her the wrong way just being there. Will you do it? It's too late. Huh? I'm behind you. Oh, she didn't go to Kitty's. She was waiting to see what happened. Yeah. She saw you, Cabber, gun and all. <laughs> she doesn't look like she's coming to tell you goodbye. <laughs> no. Oh, she doesn't, does she? Moment, our star, William Conrad. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. A cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better, and Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture, so Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips. Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. You know, writers like Ned Buntline drew exaggerated word pictures of the West, yet they did no real harm. But next week, two writers from New York come to Dodge and are the cause of an Indian massacre. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Vic Perrin, Gene Bates, Barney Phillips, and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Live modern. Change to L&M. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Only with L&M can you enjoy the full, exciting flavor of today's finest tobaccos. No other cigarette, plain or filter, gives you the full, exciting flavor you get through the pure white miracle tip. So light up. Free up. Let your taste come alive. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke.